Hi Year 3, so it is Wednesday today and it is time for some English work. Um, we are going today to be looking at a type of writing that we have looked at before. Um, so this is a bit of a revision really of some of the features that we have looked at in the past of this type of writing. Um, and we're actually going to start off with a text that we looked at together in class the first time that we started doing this type of text. And the reason why we're showing you this piece of text again is because I'm interested to see how many of the different types of features that you can remember from the work that we did last time on this. OK, so if I show you the piece of text that I'm talking about, then um, that will give you a clearer idea of um, which one um, might jog your memory a little bit as to which one we are going to be looking at. So it is, let me just find it on here. Okay, as always, there we go. So, so many screens up, it's hard to find the, the right one. So how to feed a baby. Now you may or may not remember this, it depends on how good your memory is, but um, this was something that we looked at before we did our own piece of instruction writing and our piece of instructional writing that we did in class was to do with um, how to mummify a body when we looked at the um, ancient Egypt, uh, ancient Egyptians rather. So this is our piece of text. On here, we should see some features. So when we're talking about features, we're talking about the way it's set out, um, the type of language that is used. When we're reading through it, we might recognise some words that we think, ah, that is something that we use in our instruction writing. OK, so it is called How to Feed a Baby. Follow these simple steps to ensure your baby is well fed and happy. And we've got a what you need, and then we've got a list there. Clearly, we've got a high chair, bib, baby food, bowl, spoon, microwave, optional, but it depends if it needs to be heated up or not, a cup of water or juice. And then we've got a what to do. So we've got firstly, place the baby gently in the high chair and fasten their harness. When in the high chair, put the bib round the baby's neck. Next, Pour the baby food carefully into the bowl. If the baby likes it warm, heat the food gently in a microwave. OK, I'm not going to read it all through. You can have a, a look um, at the rest of it um, on your own. OK, and uh, read through it yourself as I'm uh, talking to you because you're more than capable of reading through that. But as you're reading through, have a little think about some of the um, features that you can remember from when we looked together at instructional writing. OK, so think about those layout, the layout, think about the words that are in um, the text that show us that it's an instruction text. I wonder if you've got some of them in mind already. Some of those features we can use when we are writing a piece of instructional text. Hopefully you've spotted some of them as we've gone through and you're thinking, I remember we do this and we do this and we set it out like this. Let's have a look at one which is annotated this time. So this is one which is showing us some of the features and you can just have think about how many of these that you have remembered from uh, your work that you did before. So we've got this time going down the side, we've got our, some boxes here and those boxes are numbered and that really lists down the different features that we should be able to spot as we're going through. OK, so we have got, first of all, it says an introduction. Well, there's our introduction, isn't there? Follow these simple steps to ensure your baby is well fed and happy. So we know what these instructions are going to be about. We've got an introduction. We talked about introduction in, I think, probably every single piece of writing that we've done. We always need an introduction and instructions are no different. We've got a list of equipment. OK, um, 
So we've got a list of equipment that we need here. And you might notice that we've got bullet points as well to help list it down individually. So you can glance really clearly at the set of instructions and know exactly what you need. You haven't got to read lots of words closely together. It's all listed clearly out, okay? So it's a list of equipment using bullet points. Number three, it says headings and subheadings, bullet points and numbered steps used to organize the text. Well, that's quite big, isn't it? So look, this is number three. So number three is up here, little number three, because that's next to my heading. I need a main heading. I need a subheading. Here's another number three here. What do you need? This is showing that this part of my instructions is telling me what I need. And if I go down here as well, we've also got a number three here, what to do. So we're separating our what we need in and what we need to do. OK, and if I go further down here, one of the other things that was mentioned was um, if I go back up to the box there. Numbered steps used to organize the text. Well, there's our numbered one, two, three, four, step by step. So this is what we are going to be doing. OK, so that's an important feature of instruction writing. Four, box number four over here, chronologically ordered steps chronologically. Can we remember? Well, those are our time words. So if we're doing it in chronological order, we are doing it in time order. We've talked about that in history, but we have talked about it in English before as well. Now, if you think back to um, our work that we were doing yesterday as well um, on time conjunctions, that sort of fits together because those time words will help us to get the order as we are writing our instructions. OK, so we have got them in chronological order. It's being explained step by step in chronological order. OK, that's number four. Number five, imperative verbs used throughout. Imperative verbs. Now, Verbs, we should know, because we've talked about verbs a lot when we've been doing home learning, are to do with our um, doing words. All right, they are words that we do. Imperative verbs, we did use another word for these. The imperative verbs is the posh way of saying it, but basically they're bossy verbs. So we are really giving commands on how they should be doing and what they should be doing. OK, so... Number five, so if we look through, we've got place, fasten, put, heat, pour on this one out then. There's all those words there are our imperative verbs. And that's what we get in instructional writing because we are given, giving instructions on how to write and telling them what to do. So we're going to be needing to use our imperative verbs. We've got adverbs. So adverbs tell us, help tell us the time order, okay? They very often end in L-Y, okay? So firstly, we've got our adverb there, okay? We've got some other examples here, frequently as well. That's our L-Y word, it tells us how often. Carefully, we've got an adverb there. But adverbs don't always end in L-Y. They can be our time words. They can tell us when something has happened. So in this instance, words like next and now and after are also counted as our adverbs and our time um, words that we're using. And then number seven, it says a conclusion. So just as we had a, an introduction at the start, we should have a conclusion at the bottom as well. OK, so our conclusion on this one, the baby should now be content and possibly ready for a sleep or maybe a nappy change. That delightful job that has to be done. So these here are the features that we have looked at before that we would expect to see in an instructional text. Now, like I said at the start, 
we've looked at that one before. That's something that we have looked at together as a class. So what we thought it would be useful for you to do today is to have a look at another um, type of text, another type of instructional text and see if you can spot the features yourself, okay, in there. So this, I have to say, this instructional text is a little bit more detailed than the one that we just looked at. Um, they're going into a, a bit more detail for you on that one there. Um, but nevertheless, we should still be able to spot the um, different types of features that are in there. Okay, so I will go back to this one here. So this here is your example text, slightly different to how to feed a baby. This one is how to wash your elephant. You never know when you're going to need to do that. So you should have this copy in today's folder. What I would like for you to do is to annotate it in the same way as we've just done with the other one that we've looked at together. So read through it and highlight, underline, any examples that we've talked about and you can do your own key you can show what features you have spotted when you are going through okay so can you see any examples of headings or subheadings can you see any examples of imperative verbs or bossy verbs can you see any examples of bullet points being used so what features can you see and going through, what we can do is we can go through and highlight, underline in different colours, all those different features that you should be able to spot. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get you to pause the video now, have a go at doing it. I spent about five or ten minutes reading through it and underlining and highlighting, like I've said, those different features and see how many you can find. And when you're ready, you can come back to the video and we will go through the things that you should have found. So we've done one together. I want you to have a go at doing one on your own now, but we will go through the answers together. So I would ask you now to um, pause the video, go and have a go at doing that sheet and then come back to me when you have finished doing that. I shall see you shortly. Welcome back. So hopefully you have managed to have some time now to look at your sheet of how to wash an elephant. I hope you've learned now um, how to wash an elephant should ever the occasion arrive that you need to do that. Um, you've hopefully gone through and annotated it and underlined it and shown all those different features. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look together at hopefully the things that you have spotted. So as we go through it, look at your sheet and just see how it matches up. And if you want to add some things to it as you are going through, then you're more than welcome to, because that's what we do when we're in class. We get your ideas first and then we add to it when we're helping each other out. So let me go back to our how to wash an elephant. Okay, so on this one, again, down the side, I've almost got my own key here. So in the boxes, we've got the different features that we should have spotted. So we've got heading and subheadings. Well, how to wash your elephant would be our main heading. Okay, that would be our main heading that we're thinking about with our instructions. We're not really going to put year three instructions, example text, because that's just for us. The actual instructional text is how to wash your elephant. And that's the heading that we're interested in. OK, so that's our main heading for our instructions. But then we've also got our subheadings. So hopefully you've spotted that we have got a subheading here of equipment telling us what, what that section is about. And then we've got another one here for method. Now, if you notice, the subheadings are different from the ones that we looked at last time when we we're looking at how to feed a baby. Um, and that's fine. It doesn't matter if there, you know, hasn't got to be as definite subheading as long as we've got a subheading there to tell us. OK, I think the last one for equipment is what you will need. 
and then the one for method, they'd said what to do. They mean exactly the same things, it's just a different way of putting it down, but we need to have a subheading there. So we can see that we've got that there. So you might have underlined or highlighted, hopefully, those examples there in a, in a particular colour. You hopefully have spotted our introduction sentence, okay? Now, this has been a bit more cleverly done. Has your elephant rolled in mud? Question mark. So we're using other punctuation there as well. Elephants need to be kept clean or they can often become unhealthy. It's really important. Use this handy set of instructions to ensure you keep your pet squeaky clean. So there's our introduction. It's telling us what our um, piece of uh, instruction or text is going to be about. We've then got a list of what is needed. Well, there we go. There's the list of what we needed. There's quite a few items that are going to be needed there for our um, elephant, as you would expect. It's going to be a big job, so we need lots of different equipment there. So hopefully you might have underlined that or highlighted that in the colour to say we've got a list of equipment. Then steps in chronological order. OK, so hopefully the whole as we read through that, we should see that it's been done in chronological order. OK, it has been written out step by step so that we know everything is following on one at a time. OK, and it's in the right order. It's no point telling us to dry the elephant to start with before we've even washed him. They need to be in that order. Five, you might have spotted some imperative or our bossy verbs in there. OK, so it might be that you might have spotted this word here, prepare. OK, that's telling them what to do. It's a bossy verb. OK, you might have spotted use or soak or squeeze. OK. There might well be some other examples in there. I can see one here that hasn't got a number by it, but scrub, we're telling them to do it. OK, so there are lots of examples there of bossy verbs where we're telling them that's what they need to be doing. OK. Numbers to separate the steps. Well, here we can see we've got our one, two, three, four, and there's a space between each one as well, just to make it a little bit clearer to see. A conclusion sentence, I'll write down at the bottom here, look, there's our conclusion. Enjoy your spotlessly clean mammal, but keep a close eye on them near any muddy puddles because you never know, they could be there again getting in a mess. Hopefully you've spotted your conclusion sentence and you've put that in your key. And wow, look at all this here on this one. You might have done yours slightly differently on how you've done yours, but hopefully you've spotted some of our adverbs again, which help tell us the order that things are happening in. So our time conjunctions, okay, or prepositions to show that time. So those are these words here, firstly, next, after that, afterwards. And that's what helps give us our chronological order as well. Now, Finally, and you might even have spotted some within the sentence itself. So here, for example, as a result, you should watch out for sharp bits of flying elephant toenail. Sounds a bit dangerous to me. So those are the features that we would expect to see. Some of them are thinking to think about layout. Some of them are getting us to think about the types of language that's used. OK, but hopefully that's been a bit of a reminder for you to get you thinking. So as a little final activity for today, because that's taken you probably quite a while to read through all those different instructions as it is. But just as a final little thing, just to get you thinking about the layout and the order and how it is all put together. There's a couple of sheets in the uh, folder for you today. Um, some of them are for Jacqueline Wilson and Roald Dahl, and there's another one for David Williams. So choose the one which um, is suitable for you. And what you are going to do is you are going to unjumble them because they are all in a bit of a jumble at the moment. So if I show you um, an example um, of what I mean, so you can see. 
for yourself. So it might be that yours looks like this here. Again, the slightly different ones depending on which group you're in. But it, as you can see, they're all in a bit of a muddle there. What you need to do is cut them out and reorder them, stick them in the right order so it makes sense so that you can see where your headings are, where your um, subheadings would go, okay? And which bit's going to come first? And can you work out which order that the um, final instructions need to go into? So are we looking at those adverbs um, to tell us the order that they are happening in, okay? Our time conjunction words. So, a final little activity for you to have a go at doing today, just to really be sure that you are confident with your setting out of your instructions. And then tomorrow, we're going to have a look at actually writing your own set of instructions. So we're going to use what you have done today to help you write your own set of instructions. And I think you're going to enjoy the sets of instructions that we're going to write tomorrow. So come back and see me tomorrow and we will go through what instructions you're going to be uh, working on then. But for now, have a good day sorting out your instructions, get them in the right order, and I shall catch up with you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.